Hello and welcome. My name is Justin Rampa and I am your Customer Experience Manager for the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library. I hope you are all doing well and staying safe and healthy during this time. Thank you for coming to our Virtual Planning Zone Community Forums. The original plan earlier this year was to hold these community forums in person across the county. In fact, we did manage to hold two in-person community forums before having to adjust to pandemic operating procedures. So now I'm back and I will be recording the presentations for each of the five planning zones, which include the Central Planning Zone, the Central North Planning Zone, the Northeast Planning Zone, the Southeast Planning Zone, and the West Planning Zone. These five planning zones were established as part of the work of the Facility Master Plan for orientation and organizational purposes. By observing how each of our customers used our 41 locations, we were able to determine travel patterns, which helped create the five planning zones. All 40 branches and the downtown main library will receive improvements over the next 10 years. Having the planning zones can make it a little easier to talk through all of those improvements. The Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library spent 2019 working on our facility master plan. We held community listening sessions at every library location and heard from over 3,000 residents and library users. In fact, I'm sure that I've talked to many of you at either those events, on the phone, or through email messages. It's good to see you again, and I'm glad that you're here. Our facility master plan will serve as a roadmap to building the next generation library. Providing the library with recommendations and a strategic direction for upgrading our facilities over the next 10 years. We've never undertaken such a comprehensive plan as this, which will enable us to make informed decisions and maximize the dollars given to us by the taxpayers. Although the pandemic has and will continue to impact our daily lives, the library is committed to realizing the long-term vision we heard from you during the community engagement last year. We look forward to building the next generation library together and are excited to share the details of the facility master plan with you. While the recordings don't give us the chance for discussion during the presentation, I will be hosting some live question and answer sessions virtually, so be sure to check the Next Generation Library webpage for dates and times. Without further ado, let's get started talking about the Next Generation Library. I will start first with an overview of the engagement and development last year in 2019 around the Facility Master Plan. Then I will give an overview of the structure of the Facility Master Plan itself. And finally, an overview of the recommendations for those locations in your planning zone. So let's talk about the need. We started the journey of developing a Facility Master Plan in 2019 because we had a very real need for improvements to our facilities across the county. Those needs included accessibility, and as an organization, we really grew over the course of the developing of the Facility Master Plan in our understanding of accessibility. We realized that it was not enough to just be ADA compliant, but that we really need to consider the overall accessibility experience. During the course of the community engagement, we heard from one of our customers who is the mother of a daughter who uses a wheelchair. While they were appreciative to have a separate entrance that was wheelchair accessible, they also shared that it didn't feel great that she was not able to simply use the same entrance as everybody else. Having to use a different entrance, and in many cases not as direct an entrance, already set an unwelcome tone upon just entering the building. With three buildings that are not accessible and eight more with accessibility challenges, we know we need to do better and we are working on it as part of the facility master plan. Other needs include deferred maintenance, the size of our system, and just changing customer needs and demographics. In 2018, we were grateful to all of you watching and all the taxpayers in Hamilton County for passing a one mil levy that will provide us with up to $19 million a year from 2019 to 2028 as a great first step in addressing these needs. The bulk of these funds will be used for facility improvements. In addition to the passage of the levy, we also wanted to develop a facility master plan as a way to ensure that we are being strategic and efficient with those public funds entrusted to us. I quickly want to give you an overview of the process we undertook in developing the Facility Master Plan. Our Board of Trustees agreed on these principles to guide the process. 
maximize access, customer focus, equity and inclusion, industry leading excellence, sustainability, and transparency. With community engagement, we engaged with over 3,000 residents in the facility master plan planning process. Over 90 meetings, including community listening sessions at each of our 41 locations, 15 focus groups, surveys in both the branch and online. Staff were also engaged throughout the process through staff advisory team, facility master plan open houses and meetings, and facility master plan worksheets. Architects and engineers were hired to evaluate each facility and provide cost estimates for projects. Another key aspect of this plan was to really take a very holistic view of the system and try to consider improvements needed in the context of not just a singular branch, but how we really utilize all 40 branches, the downtown main library, our website and catalog, virtual services, our call center, and our distribution center to meet the needs of the communities we serve. The facility assessments revealed a need greater than anticipated. Total estimated cost to address deferred maintenance, upcoming maintenance, improvements, and upgrades is 300 to $350 million. The one mill levy that passed in 2018 gives the library up to $19 million per year for 10 years. Approximately $142 to $157 million will be used for facilities. Because the need is greater than the available funds, to fully realize our vision, the upgrades will take 20 years, not 10. And this assumes no changes to funding levels. And the plan provides a roadmap just for the first 10 years. The legend for the map includes color coding by type of recommendation included in the plan, with also approximate size relationships among the branches. The complete plan is available on the website to view or download and is divided into three sections. Section 1 includes a background and the overall recommendations. Section 2 includes specific recommendations across the three improvement threads for each branch and for the main library. Section 3 includes a recommended timeline and cost estimates for the 14 design projects. Design projects is a term that refers to one of the three threads of improvements, which I will discuss later in the presentation. Again, the plan provides recommendations, not decisions. It is a roadmap, not a stone tablet. Some of the recommendations will very likely change over the course of this 10 year project as new opportunities arise, funding streams change, and we continue our conversations with you, our community members. Some highlights from section one include that all 41 locations will receive improvements over the next 10 years. There are no closures or consolidations included in this plan. And the creation of planning zones and library typologies will help assist with more equitably distributing library services and spaces throughout the county. As I mentioned, there are three types of improvements. Strategic investments will be tailored to the specific needs of the community, and staff and community input will be gathered to inform decision making. It is worth noting that in early March, prior to having to pivot and adopt a pandemic operating procedure, I held a strategic investment workshop with the 26 branch managers whose locations will be receiving this type of improvement. While the pandemic has put this effort, as well as so many other things on hold, we will soon pick up the threads of the work done earlier in the year to further develop strategic investments across the system. The second type of improvement is capital maintenance. Capital maintenance is scheduled for 10 branches, but if something unforeseen comes up, like the air conditioning breaks, there are also funds budgeted for emergencies such as those. There are three types of capital maintenance. These include end of life cycle replacements. The first category of capital maintenance are systems that are at the end of their life cycle. These involve systems that directly impact keeping the facility safe, warm, and dry, or are extremely inefficient to operate. In 2020, we began the process to replace the HVAC system and upgrade lighting at your North Central branch. 
Although due to supply chain issues related to COVID-19, this process is taking longer than expected. There are several other HVAC replacements planned for between 2021 and 2024, which include College Hill, Marymount, Mount Washington, and Wyoming. The second category of capital maintenance is capital repairs. This includes both planned and unplanned repairs that are necessary to prevent additional deterioration or damage to the property. The facility master plan includes a contingency to address these projects as needed. Among the earliest projects in this category include tuck pointing and painting at your north side and Pleasant Ridge branches and waterproofing at Avondale. One unplanned project that came up this year was the repair and relocation of a water pump at Anderson. The third type of capital maintenance is the replacement of carpet, paint, and furniture that has exceeded its useful life. This improvement is called a branch refresh. Eight locations have been prioritized for carpet and paint during the first half of the facility master plan from 2020 through 2024. Elmwood Place, College Hill, Madeira, and Grosbeck have been completed this year by our own facility staff and overseen by Dave Selhorst. Anderson, Coryville, Green Township, and Sharonville are still being planned. These branches were chosen based on a variety of factors, which included the age and condition of their current carpet, the intentional decision to spread the work among all service zones, and the level of other improvements that were receiving related to the overall facility master plan. Design projects is the third type of improvement. These branches will have the most extensive changes. These are costly and have to be paced out throughout the 10-year project as levy funds come in annual allotments. On this map, the relative size of our branches and main library in relation to each other is designated. The color coding here is identifying which of the five planning zones each location is in. I mentioned earlier that the facility master plan takes a very holistic view of the system and improvements needed across the county. Branch evaluations uncovered a much greater need than anticipated, and we do not have the funding for every location to receive extensive upgrades in the 10-year project timeline. By grouping branches into planning zones, we can spread out improvements equitably across the county. Customer usage patterns helped us come up with these planning zones. Tracking customer usage patterns was a process that we developed last year and will continue to refine and develop. If your branch isn't slated to get a design project, then one in your planning zone will be. The facility master plan initially created four types of libraries, organized roughly by size. The north and south buildings of the main library are 500,000 square feet. This location size enables us to offer specialized services and collections, like our genealogy and local history collection and our full service makerspace. The plan calls for the creation or the update of at least one next generation library in each zone. These will be full service locations that should be representative of all the types of services we can offer. 15 of our branches currently fall into the neighborhood category. These locations can offer most services, but may have to be selective due to space limitations. Six of our branches are currently in the focus category. These are our smallest branches physically, but not in spirit. The plan recommends that these offer specific services tailored to their community needs. Each planning zone includes a mix of next generation, neighborhood, and focus libraries. Equity and inclusion was one of the Board of Trustees guiding principles for this project. The facility master plan attempts to more equitably distribute services throughout the county. As this slide demonstrates, equality is giving everyone the same bike, which often does not properly address need and is often not sustainable. Equity is acknowledging community needs and trying to give everyone the right size bike for them, which is often a much more efficient use of resources. The projects in this plan are distributed across the county. Eight of the 15 major projects are in neighborhoods with poverty rates above county average. Out of the 11 branches with accessibility challenges, seven projects are planned with those with the greatest need. 
Some highlights from Section 2. Section 2 is the most detailed part of the plan. Each branch has its own two-page profile that provides the following details. Recommended improvements within the first 10 years, general branch context, community input highlights, a long-term vision, your neighborhood networks, which include branches that are within five miles of your home branch, an overview of long-term maintenance needs, and images of the floor plan, site plan, and customer mapping. An example of a long-term vision is shown on this slide. After the 10-year improvement project, a possible next step for re-envisioning the downtown main library is to add parking and an auditorium if funds become available. The project could be even bigger in scope if the library can find a partner to support the creation of a mixed-use development that also includes retail and housing. Right now, this is just a big idea. It's not a decision. It's not a plan. First, the library will focus on the improvement projects for all 41 locations. Section 3 Highlights Section 3 of the plan focuses on those locations that are recommended for a design project by detailing site selection criteria, sequencing the cost estimates for the 14 design projects, and project budgeting. The image on this slide is an example of what a layout could look like for a next generation size library. It incorporates what we heard from the public, designated but flexible spaces for different age groups, meeting and study rooms, and increased access to technology. These are the locations recommended for a design project in the initial 10-year timeline. These locations include Blue Ash, Cheviot, Deer Park, Delhi Township, Elmwood Place, Forest Park, Madisonville, Miami Township, Mount Healthy, Norwood, Price Hill, Sims Township, Walnut Hills, West End, and Main Library. Work on Price Hill, Walnut Hills, Deer Park, and the Downtown Main Library have already begun this year. Other projects will be spaced out over the life of the initial 10-year timeline of this plan. Projects may change in size, scope, or timing based on how the plan unfolds as well as external factors like any changes to funding or the fundamental impact of how society operates after experiencing a global pandemic and how that informs what our communities need from us. Here is a 10-year implementation overview. The plan provides the following general recommendations to maximize funds. We will try and front load projects into the first five years to maximize dollars. This means that approximately $98 million worth of projects will occur between 2019 and 2023. However, implementation plans will likely change and evolve as we learn from early projects, opportunities arise, and external factors crop up. We do have some projects underway or that have been completed in 2020. For design projects, work has begun on Price Hill, Walnut Hills, and Deer Park. For capital maintenance, College Hill, Elmwood Place, Grosbeck, and Madeira have all received branch refreshes. And for strategic investments, we have begun the discussion with some beta strategic investments being tested. Let's talk about your planning zone. In this map, the legend would indicate that relative size is captured in relationship to each other but also the type of recommendation is identified by color. Additionally, shape indicates which type of branch each location is. For reference, here is an image of the Northeast Planning Zone. Included in the Facility Master Plan is a profile for each zone, which is written with the intent of gaining a holistic view of each planning zone by detailing all of the geographic communities served by those branches. I think it is very easy for us to get focused on the branches that we do have in place, but it is critical that we are mindful of all those communities across the county that do not have an immediately local branch. Now let's talk through our planning zone by opening dates. The Pleasant Ridge branch opened in 1929. The Blue Ash branch opened in 1964. The Madeira branch opened in 1965. 
And although the Deer Park branch opened in 1972 in its original location in the Dillonvale Shopping Center, it has relocated twice in the same plaza since then, once in 1989 and again in 1997. The Sims Township branch opened in 1991. The Sharonville branch opened in 1993. Also in 1993, the Loveland branch opened in its current lease location in the Shoppers Haven Shopping Center. The Bond Hill branch opened in its current lease space at Jordan Crossing, where it is co-located with other community services such as the Community Action Agency, Head Start, and WinMed Health Services in 2007. The Reading branch opened in 2015 as a state-of-the-art branch with innovative services and features. Now let's talk through those same locations in our planning zone by past renovation and relocation dates. In 1987, the Blue Ash branch did receive both a renovation and expansion. No significant improvements have been made to the Sims Township branch since opening in 1991. Similarly, there have been no significant improvements to the Sharonville branch since opening in 1993. But in that same year, the Madeira branch was remodeled and an expansion added to the branch. As I mentioned, the Deer Park branch has relocated twice in the same plaza since its original build. Once in 1989 and again in 1997. Currently, a third relocation is in the early stages for Deer Park as progress is being made towards moving into the former TJ Maxx storefront in that same shopping plaza. The Bond Hill branch has received no improvements since its opening date of 2007. In 2012, the Pleasant Ridge branch did receive a new entrance and elevator tower, which was added with modifications to make the public entry and both service levels fully accessible. Reading Branch has received no improvements since it was one of our newest branches which opened in 2015. And finally, the Loveland Branch in 2016 underwent a renovation project into a second storefront which was next door. In each branch summary of the facility master plan, there are community input highlights included. While we did hear some very specific individual ideas from community members, what is captured here is really the most consistently stated goals needed for improvements at the branches. For this slide, I've taken the summaries of input from each branch and formed a word cloud that visually demonstrates the most consistent themes across this Northeast planning zone. First, I do want to acknowledge that the most praised and lauded part of any community feedback we received, whether at a listening session or a web comment, was that library staff are the best and most beloved part of your library experience. Staff would be the biggest word on every word cloud I would put together, but the facility master plan is primarily focused on physical bu buildings. So please take a moment to read through this word cloud but feel free to pause the presentation if you'd like more time. Now let's talk about our planning zone by recommendations, starting with the design projects recommended for the Northeast planning zone, including the Blue Ash branch, the Deer Park branch, and the Sims Township branch. As a design project, it was originally recommended that the Blue Ash branch be relocated to a new site, potentially the summit development, which was feedback we received in 2019 during community engagement. However, upon releasing the facility master plan earlier this year, we heard from a large number of Blue Ash residents through email, two special community forums, and the in-person Northeast Planning Zone community forum who were not in favor of relocation and especially not in favor of the summit as a potential site. While there is not opportunity for expansion on the presently owned land parcel at this current location, we will continue the conversation with the Blue Ash community on what improvements make the most sense for that branch. 
As a design project, it is recommended that the Deer Park branch relocate to a larger location with expanded facilities and opportunities for diverse service in a space close to the current branch. This branch has the potential to be a next generation library sized facility that hosts a full range of service opportunities for community members. Currently, the space that formerly housed TJ Maxx in the Dillonvale Shopping Center has been identified as a viable relocation site with some pre preliminary design work being done on what the new branch could look like. A virtual information session for the community is being planned for the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. As a design project, it is recommended that the Sims Township branch receive a major interior renovation, small addition, and parking expansion on the existing site. The interior should be rethought to optimize wayfinding and accessibility and build upon exterior views already present. If possible, the branch should look at adding a service window or drive through book drop and possibly, possibly add additional meeting and study rooms. These improvements will allow for improved efficiency to branch function and customer satisfaction. Moving to our right at Capital Maintenance, three branches have been identified to receive capital maintenance improvements, which include some capital repairs at Pleasant Ridge with some tuck pointing and painting, and some branch refreshes at the Madeira branch and Sharonville branch. Moving down to strategic investments, as a recipient of a strategic investment, these branches have an opportunity to improve their existing facilities and enhance service. A process led by library staff with community input will identify how this investment should be made. At the following branches, Bond Hill, Loveland, Madeira, Pleasant Ridge, Redding, and Sharonville. And as a reminder of progress already made in this planning zone, the Deer Park Design Project has already begun preliminary discussions and the branch refresh at the Madeira branch has been completed. Although we had originally planned to have multiple in-person events as a way to engage with the community around the facility master plan, we have pivoted to release virtual planning zone presentations for each of the five planning zones including the Central Planning Zone, the Central North Planning Zone, the Northeast Planning Zone, the Southeast Planning Zone, and the West Planning Zone. We also plan to host live Q&A sessions starting in December, so please check the website for those details. We have a live Q&A session scheduled for December 10th from 6.30 to 7.30 in the evening. Speaking of the Next Generation Library website, this will also be the landing spot for information regarding current projects, completed projects, and future product projects. The URL is https colon backslash backslash www.cincinnatilibrary.org backslash next generation library backslash. I want to thank you all so much for attending this virtual planning zone presentation and sharing your time with me. While there is an opportunity for a live Q&A session, you can also send me an email with my contact information right here on the screen or submit feedback online through the Next Generation Library feedback form. I'd love to hear from you. Again, I hope you are all doing well and staying safe and healthy during this time. Take care and I'll see you.